Today I've had some news that's really quite sad in my small part of the bike industry. Traditional steel frames is quite a small sort of niche market and there are only a few sort of players left that build anything like a sort of traditional lug steel frame in the traditional way with uh, passed down expertise from generations. There's really not that many left. But today I found out that one of the biggest names in traditional steel frames has ceased trading. Anyway, before I get into that, I just wanted to uh, let you know that I'm sorry that I haven't done that many videos lately because I've uh, I've been actually really poorly and it's been uh, really difficult just to get just to get work work done. Never mind uh, actually film some videos as well. So uh, uh, I'm starting to get better now, but it's still still not that great. But uh, hopefully, I'm going to be able to produce a bit more content now as I'm sort of feeling better. So. That's uh, on the positive side. So today, yeah, we got the sad news that Mercy and Cycles have ceased trading, uh, which is, I think, is a real blow to the uh, handmade bicycle market, really, because you know they've been going a long, long time since 1946, um, almost as long as us, and uh, you know there's all that passed down wealth of knowledge that you know even if somebody rescues the brand at this point, you're gonna lose all that. Um, and I think it's symptomatic of how difficult this market has become but we really need to save the heritage of traditional steel frames otherwise we're going to have absolutely nobody left that that has the experience and the, the knowledge to work on. So what's caused this? Is it more the Teslafication of the bike industry? I mean the main trend these days is to have uh, electronic shifters and hydraulic brakes and then along with that you've got all the things that have to go with it like your, your through axles, you got rid of your quick releases all these things just add complication to the build especially when you're building a traditional steel lug frame because you know you've got to then do through axles which takes longer, you've got to put dismounts on uh, you've got to use uh, thicker chain stays and thicker fork blades which get rid of the, the nice um, forgivingness of the steel fork and add a load to the weight and then you've got other things like the uh, oversized head tubes and oversized bottom brackets um, yeah, it takes away from the the beauty of a, of a traditional uh, frame really if you ask me I'd, I, I find it funny because in, in other industries you know like uh, the car industry and the uh, cameras um, you know people love the uh, the retro look uh, I mean people love to have like a, a classic looking car with modern components to go with it or a classic looking camera with uh, you know digital uh, still a digital uh, camera but it's much more difficult to do that with a traditional steel frame because the components just don't really suit that kind of frame what we really need is uh, somebody like Campagnola to uh, to start doing a uh, sort of early 2000s or, or late 90s style group set that's that does rim brakes and is all, all polished um, because you know something like the modern Joe race or uh, or SRAM just doesn't just doesn't have the look as far as I'm concerned it kind of detracts from the look of a classic steel frame bike and then obviously you start putting the electronics on then you have to go with the heavier through axles and and you have to put discs on and all these kind of things. Now, whether it's that that's uh, that's the problem, or whether it's more the fact that you know we have to suck it up as steel frame builders, we have to uh, move with the times, and um, that means that you know we need to build frames that that take wider wider tires, have gravel or all road style geometry, and we've got to be able to take discs, and we've got to do internal cables and things. Um, but, you know, if we're going to survive, we're going to have to innovate and find ways of doing that without it, without it detracting from, from the workmanship and the craftsmanship of a, of a steel frame, but without it adding, like, double to the cost, which uh, I'm finding that that's, that's really what's happened, you know, because it's taking me twice as long, really, to build a, build a frame that, that takes all the, uh, the modern fittings. So what do you think? A steel frame still got a place in the world? Is there still a niche market for hand cut lugs? Is the traditional craft of building a building a steel frame 
worth saving? I mean, is that part of our cycling heritage that we uh, we need to keep, or is it time it's consigned to the history books and we just forget about them and just carry on with those carbon frames? What do you think? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.